Alright guys, quick recap of the Normans now. So last video we looked at the Anglo-Saxons, so we're going to quick, quickly look at Normans. And um, just remember that this is a change in continuity study, so we need to be thinking about the previous period and the, the periods that we're going to look at. Um, and with Anglo-Saxons, we're going to look specifically in this little video at an overlap between laws. So, let's just get started with the Normans. Um, on 14th of October 1066, uh, William Duke of Normandy beat um, Harold Godwinson in battle um, at the Battle of Hastings and became the new King of England. Okay, so what kind of things did the Normans introduce? Well, the first thing they did is they built castles to control the land and the people. Now, there's no laws attached to this essentially, but you can still put this into your answer because this is a way of controlling people. Um, castles had never been built in England before. Um, if you remember back to Motton Bailey castles, which were built in year seven, um, these are a way of telling the local population that they will follow your laws and respect the way that things are done now that you are in charge. So castles are something you need to keep in, in keep in mind. Um, the Normans kept the majority of Anglo-Saxon laws. There's several reasons for this. Firstly, um, it was too much trouble to replace them with different laws, and um, more importantly, these laws actually worked. So, for example, um, things like tithings um, and uh, human cry uh, worked really well, um, cost the Normans nothing, um, and were really effective at policing local communities. So there was no desire for the Normans to replace any of um, the Anglo-Saxon laws that worked. Um, we will talk about what they did change um, and what laws they did replace or abolish. But for things like tithings, um, hue and cry, um, punishments like fines, um, corporal punishment, capital punishment, they kept things pretty much the same. So there's a, there's a huge bit of continuity for you there that you could put into a nice exam answer. Um, they kept trial by ordeal until 1215 when it was outlawed. Um, but they also introduced their own system of trial by combat. Um, so, trial by ordeal, we talked about in the Anglo-Saxon video, trial by combat was where the accused and accuser would fight until the death, or until one of them couldn't carry on, um, and the idea was that God would be on the side of the person who was in, uh, innocent or right, um, uh, so it's an, just a, a different type of trial by ordeal in a way. Okay, and They also introduced church courts, which were courts specifically for um, people who claimed benefit of clergy or for those people who were involved in the church, i.e. Uh, priests or monks, um, so that they could uh, be tried by a church court. And church courts were much more lenient and they didn't give the death penalty and they gave far, far, far easier punishments out. Um, really important one, the Normans introduced the forest laws, and uh, the hated forest laws. Um, these basically said that trees in uh, royal forests couldn't be cut down. Um, anyone living near woods or forests that were deemed to be the king's land were not allowed to obey bow and arrows um, or dogs, so they were forbidden. And hunting of um, deer, especially in royal forests, was banned. Um, and this didn't just apply to forests and woods. Um, this is all land which was now um, under the command of William the Conqueror um, and the Normans. Okay, And there was some very serious... Um, punishments for people who broke these laws. Um, for example, if you were caught hunting, then you would have the two fingers needed to fire a bow cut off. Um, and the reason behind this is that the Normans were trying to send a message to the Anglo-Saxons that they now owned the country, it was their land, and they weren't allowed to use it as they wished. And in a strange way, this is actually the beginning of property laws, and you could really link this to uh, the bloody code if you wanted to, because this is the first time that somebody has said, you cannot go off into the woods and hunt deer or rabbits and um, to put a little bit more meat on your on your plate. So that's a really important one. Um, like the Anglo-Saxons, they used corporal and capital punishments for serious crimes. So no, that's a big chunk of continuity. If you think about that as a big change, there's a big chunk of continuity for you. And they kept corporal punishment. They kept the same kind of punishments like mutilation, stocks, pillory, um, whipping, that kind of thing. And obviously they kept hanging and beheading as their capital punishment. Um, so there's, there's, there's no change there. Um, they did change um, the language that was used, no surprise. Um, they spoke Norman French and they wanted that to be used in their courts. Uh, records were kept in Latin. Uh, it's worth just noting that neither of these languages uh, would make any sense to uh, normal Anglo-Saxon people. So um, it, this is another form of control in a sense. Um, 
they are imp imposing their language on the people of uh, of England. Okay, and um, fines, really important one to mention about fines. They kept fines. Fines worked. Uh, fines were good, except they abolished the system of uh, wear guilds, and they made fines payable to the king. Okay, great system. I'd do the same if I was William. They also introduced something called a murderum fine, and this is from the old French word of murdre uh, or murder. So essentially, um, if you um, committed a, an offence, for example, if you murdered a Norman, then you would have to pay quite a significant fine to the king. Okay, so there's some change and there's some continuity there for you. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to mention um, Anglo Saxons were pretty forward thinking, and um, they gave women quite a lot of rights and treated women quite fairly. The Normans were not like this, and they completely took away women's rights, um, and women were deemed to be subject to the rule of men, um, which is really quite nasty. So, hopefully I've covered some of the basics there of keywords and ideas that you need. Um, I'm going to now look at a Venn diagram. Um, I'll try and zoom out, it won't be very good. Um, so, what the idea behind this is that there were things that the Anglo-Saxons did which the Normans abolished and there were things that the Normans did that the Anglo-Saxons didn't okay so for example murder and fines uh, forest laws church courts however this period sees a lot of continuity i.e. things that the Normans and the Anglo-Saxons both did so I've only put down a snapshot here of things okay and um, you can you could do your own Venn diagram get your notes from your book um, and really go to town on this um, because the chances are your exam question will be something to do with um, change and continuity um, and if not it's still good revision for both periods okay and um, some new concepts that the Normans introduced that I'm just going to quickly go through and um, the first one is the idea of sanctuary the idea, the idea behind this was that if you were um, on the run from the law or if you're in trouble you could get to a cathedral or a church and they had a sanctuary knocker, which was a big iron knocker on the door. You could knock it and you could claim 40 days sanctuary in a church um, or a cathedral. Um, and after that time, you would either have to go into exile, so flee to France or wherever, or you would have to stand trial. OK, and um, just to just to jump to the, this next one, because I'm talking about the church and the importance of religion. Um, if you could then read a passage from the Bible in Latin. Um, you would also be able to claim benefits of clergy, which would mean that you could actually be tried by a church court. And like I said before, church courts were much more lenient than the royal court or a manor court um, or a hundred court. And so at, at, at a church court, you would definitely avoid the death, death penalty. Um, so if you're a murderer on the run, it would be a good idea to get yourself to a church, claim sanctuary and somehow manage to learn Latin and be able to read a bit of the Bible because that would get you a much more lenient sentence. Um, they introduced the concept of parish constables. Um, these are not police. Uh, there was no police until um, the Victorian period, until 1829. However, um, it's worth mentioning that these people were unpaid volunteers whose job was to lead a hue and cry. So um, if you've got a really, really good person as a parish constable, someone who was well-respected, um, quite tough, then hue and cries would have a much greater chance of, of success. And um, finally, and I forgot to highlight him, you've got sheriffs, okay? And it's worth just thinking about um, something like Robin Hood now. Um, if you think about Robin Hood, it's the sheriff of Nottingham who's always trying to track him down. Um, sheriffs were royal, official, royal officials um, whose job was to um, go after serious criminals. Um, we're talking like murderers, multiple murderers here, rapists, that kind of thing. They're not going to get themselves involved in theft or or low-level crime, um, and their, their job as a royal official was to bring people in front of the royal courts to stand justice, um, and we still have them today, um, although they're called like um, high court law enforcers now or something like that, um, and these guys could form a posse um, who would then go out and, um, and do a sort of enhanced hue and cry, try and capture criminals, okay? So... I'm in danger of waffling now. Hopefully that's covered everything you need for the Normans. When you're revising this topic, always be thinking about your change in continuity. Think about what's changed since the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon period and what stayed the same. And also be thinking about those factors. So the importance of um, the government, i.e. the king making changes, William and people like that. 
um, the importance of religion. So, for example, um, you know, church courts, um, um, benefits of clergy, that kind of thing. Um, and then also the social attitudes of people, because in a way, not a lot has changed. Okay, punishments are still are still about a deterrent, and um, they're still quite brutal. Um, and hopefully that should sum up this topic for you guys.